Hello, my name is Tim Hoffman. Um, I'm an adjunct faculty member here at Argosy University. And I wanted to put together um, a video, actually a couple of videos, um, about writing a research paper, a term paper, final paper, whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm not an English teacher, okay? In fact, I teach in the mental health counseling program. But I will tell you that I grade a lot of these kinds of papers. And I see uh, two distinct groups of people, or two distinct types of papers when I get them. Um, there are some people that really know how to do this well, and so this video and this whole module probably isn't going to be doing anything for you. Um, but I also see a group of people that really don't know how to do this very well. Um, and um, I thought I'd put something together to give you a refresher course, if you will, um, for your English 101 and 102, where you really should have learned all this. Um, so that when you put your paper together, you've got some sense of how to do it. Um, and, um, you know, don't make some of the common mistakes that I see. Um, it, this is not intended to be a substitute for any kind of English course. Um, the, uh, War Argosy has a writing course, and uh, they actually have some tutoring available um, to help you with this whole process. But my intent here, once again, is just to kind of give you a little bit of refresher and some ideas as you start to go down that road of building a, a research paper. Okay, so let's kind of, what are we going to cover here? Well, we're going to talk about um, a number of different topics. We're going to just touch on them. Um, things like we're going to talk a little bit about gathering information before you even start, whether that be from the professor um, or coming up with ideas, actually um, um, doing the research, uh, you know, doing an outline, writing a draft, um, and then uh, actually revising and polishing that draft in such a way that when you turn it into the professor that uh, you can get a good grade on it. So let's start with this. One of the things that I find people really miss out on is they don't really pay attention to what the professor has given them as far as what do they want in a paper. Um, that may seem like a kind of a simple thing, but lots of times people tend to skim over the syllabus or anything else that they've been given about the paper. And they say, okay, well, I need to write a six-page paper or an eight-page paper or whatever it might be. I need to have a couple of sources, and that's it. Well, it's not quite that simple. You know, uh, I think what you really want to do is you want to take the time, it doesn't take you very long, to take a good close look at the syllabus and see exactly what is the professor looking for. Um, are, are they looking for specific kinds of things in the topics? Or are they going to be grading on particular kinds of things with an APA style? Um, you know, how much does grammar count? All that stuff. You may get more than the syllabus. You may also get maybe a grading rubric or some other kind of handout that can usually be very valuable um, because you'll know ahead of time what is this professor looking for. Um, you know, typically you get a chance to write one or maybe two papers in a course because these are relatively short courses. So you don't get a good sense of what is a professor looking for before you actually write it. Well, take a look at what he's documented or what she's documented, um, and that may help you kind of in the whole process along the way. So definitely I would take a look at whatever they've given you um, to be sure that what you end up writing is a good match for what they're looking for. And once again, you probably get a better grade as a result. Now, the next step here is to start exploring up, well, what am I going to write about? Um, you, you obviously want to write about a topic that's going to be related to whatever the course is. I say obviously because that since some of the papers I get, that isn't always the, core, the, the case. I get papers that are only very tangentially related. I typically teach ethics, and so I, I, you know, I end up getting papers that just have a little bit of ethics in them and they have a lot of other stuff, which isn't really what I was looking for. I mean, this is a course on ethics. What you write needs to really be related to an ethical topic. Okay? So that is certainly something you want to look, about, look for. Um, how do you find that? Well, um, I think usually it's not a bad idea to take a look at your textbook. You, these are, uh, papers are typically assigned early on in the course when you've not read most of the textbook. So just get the textbook out, um, take a look at your table of contents, see all the subjects that you're going to be covering in the course. Um, some of that information will probably be in your syllabus or other places as well. But, you know, see if there's some things in there that you can pick out that might be interesting for you. Because if you're going to write a paper like this, you're going to do some exploring. You might as well explore an area or a topic that would generate some interest and some motivation for you. So, um, certainly I would look at the textbook. Um, there's some other kinds of things that you can do. 
um, you can get onto the Argosy library system. Um, your professor can tell you how to do that. There's a handout with um, passwords and things like that. And you can start doing some searches to just see what kind of pops up. You know, I teach counseling ethics, so one of the things I tell my students to do is get onto some of the bigger databases, key in counseling ethics, and see what comes up. Um, you never know what you might find there. And it also gives you some sense of how much material there is in a particular area, which is going to be important later. So it's a time for exploration. You know, you may end up with a half a dozen or three or four different ideas. And as you start to explore them a little bit more, you'll be able to hone this down to a particular specific topic for you. Um, so definitely, you need to give yourself the time to do the exploration and then um, the honing process, if you will, through some of your research. You can do internet searches, but I will tell you that a lot of the stuff that you get on the internet is not necessarily academically sound. So it may give you an idea about what to do for a particular topic, but you're probably not going to be able to use websites in a research paper. So just kind of a little forewarning there. Um, you know, you can't just use websites. They've got to be backed up by, you know, typically by uh, peer-reviewed journals and those kinds of things, textbooks or other kinds of books that are written on the subject. Um, so, there's some ideas about how to actually get to a topic. Once you have decided on what your topic is going to be, now you need to do more in-depth uh, research. Um, that includes things like, once again, going back to the Argosy Online Library and doing searches on that topic and try and come up with as many words as you can think of that might be used to, uh, you know, describe that topic. Usually, if you, if you find a, uh, an article or two, a journal article or two, and read through it a little bit, it'll have some keywords that you can use to do some other kinds of searches within the library system. Now, you can always go to a traditional library for this, too, um, and, you know, if you want to do that, that's great. There are some advantages to that. But you have a lot of resources available to you through this online library system. And I would certainly look there to take advantage of that first. You know, if you absolutely have to go and find a book somewhere, then it's extra effort. And I, extra effort is good. Um, but you may not need that if you really know how to use the library system well. Um, so once you've got this topic, um, the next thing I really encourage students to do is to prepare an outline. I know this is something that takes extra time. It, you know, it's going to take you an extra 15, 20 minutes to think through, you know, how am I going to introduce this? What are my points going to be? What's my thesis, my main topic or thesis going to be? What are the elements underneath that thesis that I really want to present that I'm getting from the research? Well, you know, what, what kind of conclusions am I going to come to? Um, but I will tell you, if you do the outline ahead of time, it helps in your research, it helps the paper flow a lot better, um, and it actually keeps you from running off on tangents, uh, which are maybe not related to your topic, which can be another pet peeve for um, you know, the people that are going to be reading this and scoring this. Um, so you want to do whatever you can to prepare ahead of time. Um, so you know kind of where you're going with this, and it's not a surprise when you get to the end. Uh, neither, there's no professor that I know that grades a paper, and they want to be really surprised when they get to the end that uh, the end doesn't seem to match what you wrote. So an outline is a good thing. I know it takes extra time, but believe me, it's worth it. Now, I need to break these uh, um, videos into a couple of different segments here just to get them to a reasonable size. So I'm going to bring part one here to a close. But I'll start at this point at the next video, and then we can go on from there.